Hey, what's up, guys? Tugi here, back again with another episode of my California Golden Seals Draft the Glory Franchise Mode series right here on NHL 19. It's a mouthful of a title. It will never change, much like our luck, apparently. We're ready for the 2020 or 2032-2033 season. That is... That's going to happen before you know it, and that's a scary thought. <laughs> but regardless, we're in the 2030s, damn it. It's time for a new season. We left the last episode with the question of who stays and who goes. Although, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way, as a few of you pointed out in the comments. At the very least, the poll was a way to figure out who we wanted in the top six this season. I'm going to give you guys a look at the team in a moment, just getting to a couple of your comments quickly. Uh, when I'm finished with the series, will I be doing another franchise mode? Yes. No, I'm going to retire. I'm done. No, of course I will be. Am I going to tell you what it is? No. Is that because I don't know yet? I'll never tell you. Remember when Tate Dwyer started out as a 47? I don't, but that doesn't surprise me. To say the 47s can't develop, eh, but it's like a 95% chance that they won't. So, you know, it's a pleasant surprise when they do. That's pretty much uh, the intent that I'm saying at that point in time. When you stop this series, how about Cleveland? I don't know if we're going to be doing another flashback team. We'll figure that out when the time comes. And aside from that, actually, there was the other one. Uh, a series where we draft only gems or busts. If you follow me on Twitch, you know that we have tried that. Uh, we didn't explore the option all that far. It would very much limit the player pool to a Seattle Sea Cattle level. If you've never seen that series, go back and watch it. It was great. But, yeah, it's it's a possibility. It's a possibility. That said, I didn't want to waste too much time before getting into this because it is a very big episode. The two least voted upon players, Nazarov and Vita Luoma, are currently not in the lineup. This is how we're shaping up this season. Cox, Fragapani, Redden, Macaulay, Ivanov, Nylander, Svoboda, Sarno, Morose, McAmmond, Yang, and Boro. On defense, Shattenkirk, Zeeler, Richter, Francois, Holmberg, and Bukaboom. The goaltender is Stu Crab with Esteban Fragapani as the backup. So down in the AHL, this is how they're shaping up. And actually, here, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you a quick look here. Uh, just as far as player types and everything else is concerned, we are taking the balanced approach in terms of, you know, playmaker, sniper, and then like a two-way or a power forward. A lot of different options. That is the good thing about the players that we have on the squad right now. Versatile. So I'm excited to see what happens this season. I mean, I think with the squad the way it is, I'm pretty sure we're all expecting at the very least playoffs, it's just whether or not that happens beyond that. But taking a look at the AHL for the moment, uh, we start off with Robinson, Melnick, Tomas Nylander, not Tatar, and Ralph Ricci. Second line of Gabriel Levani, Quincy Clements, and Maximilian Kretschmann. Third line, we find Stefan Soro, who had time on the fourth line last year, Sergei Nazarov, and Jean-Francois. All three members were actually on the NHL squad last year. Philip Viborny, Brendan, or Brandon Chuk, I, was gonna, I thought it was Braden for a second. Brandon Chuko and Caleb Pinot are there. Vita Luoma is a healthy scratch for now, and I will explain. Defensively, we have Sergei Vorobioff with Oldrick Blotny, Wayne Hancock, and Victor Saugus. Jason McCutcheon, the random free agent that we signed, is with Graham Bannister. Although, you know, for the hell of it, we could do something quite stupid and just put in Vita Luoma on defense just so that he gets to play. So this was the main uh, topic of discussion, right? As to whether or not I even have to get rid of Nazarov and Vita Luoma. So that's what I mean by saying that the poll, at the very least, can be used to say, okay, these two are on the outs to start the season. They each have one year left. I'm not opposed to keeping them on the roster, just for the hell of it, just in case two players underperform. For the rest of this season, their contracts are going to be up. Unlike with Len Iliakis, who had, what, two or three years left, I wasn't going to hold him hostage for that long. Uh, as it is, he just he would have done nothing. It would have been fine for the cap, right? Like, we could have technically kept Iliakis, kept Fuller, and just held them on the roster and held them hostage. Uh, it's a bridge too far, in my opinion, as far as getting to the point where we're just holding on to players for the sake of holding on to them. Um, so, even with the idea of keeping Nazarov, 
and Vita Luoma. I'm not going to say I'm 100% on board, but we'll see how it goes. Maybe we find out that the team is struggling, which in fairness might not be a bad thing. We'll see how it goes for now. Uh, Nazarov and Vita Luoma will stay. They'll be down in the AHL. I did want to address the fact that we've had a leadership change as well. It's been talked about. Uh, Redden and Fragapani stripped of their letters. No captains this season, but Macaulay, Nylander, and Richter will wear the letters this season. It means literally nothing, but why not give it a shot, right? Try to send a message to the group that is there. And just to double check here with the scouts, I think that's the one thing that I didn't double check. Yeah, case in point. So I remember that we had hired some scouts. Uh, give me a minute. I need to sort this out, and we'll get going with the sim. I think, though, that's pretty much everything. Uh, Vita Loma and Azeroth down in the AHL. They're on the way out. The roster is set. We're going to try to sim. I mean, we will sim through the whole season in this episode. So give me a minute to handle the scouting. All right, the scouting is set. Our teams are set. The season is ready to begin. Let's do this. Let's see what this new campaign brings. There's really not a whole hell of a lot to say or do. It's just waiting now for the outcome of the, you know, the season and the way this team looks, whether or not we're a playoff team. Again, you would expect that we'd be a playoff team. We've seen AI teams that have been good enough to win the Stanley Cup with squads like this, I just don't know what to expect. And I think that's the big thing, maybe, is that our expectations, there's no basis for expectations. We can think that it's going to be a great year, and then we flounder in the first round of the playoffs. We can think it's going to be a bad year, and we make the playoffs way ahead of schedule, like we did early on in this campaign. It's just, it's nerve-wracking, really. And... I know that there's a certain part of the audience now that's waiting for Redden and Fragapani to not perform so they can be like, see, I told every other one of you that voted for them to stay that we shouldn't have and that we should have let them go. And then there's the, pre <laughs> there's the people that did vote for them to stay that are going to be either very happy or excited, just like the sponsors and the fans and Eugene, everyone's excited. As I'm going to skip looking at the draft class for now, I just want to make... A decent amount of progress, but an 0-2-1 start is not great. But maybe, oh boy, we are winless through four games. <laughs> it begins. It begins. The North Bay Duel of Narwhals, though, up to 4 and We do get our first win of the year, 5-4 over the Flames. I mean, in fairness, they've all been close games thus far. It's not as if we're getting blown out. But not a tremendous start for us here in the opening weeks of the season. Still way too early to judge how this is going to go down. Although, maybe... I was thinking of maybe stopping the sim at the, the first of the month. Let's at least get through November before we consider, I'd say, making any lineup changes and seeing what's been going on with the team. I mentioned as far as player types are concerned, it's been the case throughout this entire series. You have players that are very versatile, players that could be snipers, playmakers, two ways, power forwards, grinders. It's kind of ridiculous and really does make me hate the uh, player type system. I've talked about it before. Maybe not even just outright stealing the Madden system, but having it be... You know, like, the player type is decided based off of the player's attributes. I think that would be great. So, like, I have no control over whether someone or not is a, is a sniper or not. Their, you know, their attributes decide what player type they are. That would be great. That way you always have a player. Or, at the very least, you do have, like, a Madden-esque system where you get to see, oh, okay, Fragapani is a 92 sniper, but a 95 two-way and a 62 grinder. So obviously I'm not going to play him as a grinder. I think something like that would be great uh, as far as player types are concerned. And yeah, let's, let's hope. NHL 20, right? Maybe. Possibly. But we have rebounded here a little bit up to 8-8-3 eight, eight and three on the year. North Bay 13-6-0. Not too bad. I do wonder where we will be standings-wise. 
in a little bit under a week here. Again, we're going to stop on December 1st to see where we stand, how the, you know, take a look at how the team's been doing, especially the players down in the AHL that haven't been playing, that were essentially voted off the island, at least temporarily. But 6 nothing loss to the Rangers is where we will stop. So 10-9-3 at the moment. Dylan Redden, 20 points in 22 games. We are technically three points out of a playoff spot. Technically, well, technically two points out of a playoff spot, but three points back of the Calgary Flames. So it's still it's still early. It's still too close to call as far as how successful will be this season. Gregory Cox goes from being in the, uh, in the AHL to the top line, has 16 points in 22 games, 14 points for Fragapani. Not exactly scoring goals, but that's okay. I mean, again, someone else who could, uh, someone else who could be a playmaker. Dylan Redden, 20 points on the season. Not bad. Second line, Ben McCauley, 13 points. 12 for Ivanov. Nylander, one hell of a goal scorer. He has 15 points on the year. Third line, Svoboda doing all right with 12 points. 10 for Sarno and 11 for Steven Rose on the fourth line. 10 points for McCammond, 8 for Yang, and 5 for Brian Boro. So, fairly well-rounded, to be honest. We're not a one-line team. We got that going for us. Defensively, Henry Shattenkirk, 4 points, but 23 penalty minutes. Okay. Uh, Zeeler, 15 points. We know that's what he's capable of. 2 points for Richter, 8 for Rene Francois, the 1 for Holmberg, and 3 for Julius Bukaboom. Goaltending-wise, that's our biggest issue. I had concerns about Stu Crab being the starter. But then again, I had, excuse me, but then again, I had Len Iliakis as my starter in the previous season. I, we, us. Iliakis was the starter last season, and he wasn't exactly great, now was he? So yeah, that's, that's cool. We'll continue onward. I don't necessarily think there are any changes, although, let's look down in the AHL, because I imagine Nazarov is just lighting the league on fire. Even though I have him on the third line, he would have had top power play time. 13 points in 22 games. How's uh, Vita Loma doing as a defenseman? Not bad. <laughs> Not that bad. Why don't you run Dylan Redden as a defenseman and then you could uh, maybe do that? Yeah, maybe you're, maybe you're right. Maybe we could. Maybe we could run forwards as defensemen. Maybe we could. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is that we went with what the poll said. We didn't Get rid of people, which I still, I think that's the one thing that's really conflicting for me right now, is that maybe, just probably, possibly, we should have gotten rid of those two, just to, uh, just to move on. I don't like the idea of keeping them hostage, especially because, you know, waivers weren't a factor, but, you know, burying people in the minors is a thing. Hello, Carl Alsner. So, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not all that against it as my dog. I don't know if that's loud enough to pick up on the mic, but she's, uh, scratching herself in the neck, and it looks quite painful. <laughs> 16, 9, and 3, by the way. I'm gonna just keep not talking about our record, because we're gonna lose to St. Louis now that I even mentioned it. Yep, there you go, case in point. So what other random garbage can we talk about? I mean, there's, there's my adorable dog, who's just staring at me. Go to bed. Go to sleep, don't you yawn at me. Anyway, boy, three straight losses ever since I noticed the record. That always happens. Is it voodoo? Is it wizardry? Is it bullshit? <laughs> Steve Tangle would say, probably. But it's just that nervous, that anxious, that nervous feeling, the anxiousness of waiting to see what this year brings for us and it's still far far too early to tell i mean hell we've had february and march collapses where it's like oh yeah we're gonna make the playoffs nope no you're not so i try not to overreact to early season results unless it's that bad but it hasn't been that bad since we were you know in the early stages of the series as it is we're four points back with a game at hand on vegas we're very much in the race which isn't surprising we knew we'd be very much in the race here's the thing right because people were talking about when, when the topic of discussion comes up to potentially move on from Vagapani and Redden even if we were to do that we would still be competitive we might not be a playoff team but unless we were to just get rid of everybody there was no way we were going to be in contention at least in my opinion for the worst team in the league 
Like, we're just, we're too well-rounded. I mean, we're not an amazing team at this point by choice, but again, with what we've seen from certain teams, you don't necessarily have to be amazing to win the Stanley Cup. As Fragapani's goal scoring has come along, we're looking okay. That's it, really. I mean, there's not too much to say. Sergey Nazarov, how are you not, like, I know you're a, a playmaking specialist, but how have you not scored a goal? In the AHL. I just don't understand. I do want to take a look, though, at power play and penalty kill here before we continue onward. As it stands, we are a top seven team in the league. 12.7% on the power play, 80% penalty kill. So we're averaging 291 goals for per game. So we're up there. Goals against at a 245, which is, uh, wait, was it a 245? No, it wasn't. Uh, was it a two five four? Can I not read? No, it was a two four nine. There it is. I looked right past us. Our power play is the worst in the league, so we'll be looking at that. Our penalty kill at eighty percent is going to be one of the lower totals, as well, which is very concerning to be honest. Because I optimized at least what I felt was optimizing our power play, and it's not looking that great. So this is the power play. The only difference, you know, Sarno and Svoboda, who are both amazing with the puck, I figured, yeah, we must be good to go, right? Not quite. So I think the change that we're going to make here, I'm going to bump up Svoboda, and I'm going to take out Sarno and bring in Morose, who's on the third line, and we'll see what he can do. Hopefully great things. Although, you know what? Actually, I'm going to make that full change. Morose is going up on that top unit. <sighs> no, he's not. He can't, unfortunately. Svoboda can't be on that unit. We needed to change something up. So Morose will be the difference maker there. Our penalty kills, Fragapani, Redden, Ivanov, and Cox. You would think that we'd be killing off penalties, but maybe not. So I think instead we'll inverse it and, of course, go uh, with the bottom guys here. So in terms of defense... Eh, uh, I might go for Svoboda, just because he has the best skating of the group. So, although, Sarno and Yang, that's the thing I don't think anybody on those units really has uh, great skating, or face-offs for that matter. But let's go with Svoboda. He'll be potentially with Boro, and that second unit is going to be Yang. And who the hell else? I don't know. Boros there, Morose, McGammond is the other one. So who has the best face-off rating? 76 for Yang and a 70 for Svoboda. So that works. And defensively, it's our top two units. I think I'm good with that. So we should be okay. Hopefully, those changes lead to a bit more success in terms of special teams. For now, we're back to the sim. Let's do this again. Currently in third in our division. Doesn't appear that there's anyone running away with the division this year, which is promising for us. We'll see how January goes, though. 2033. We are, of course, approaching the end of this series. We still have a bit of a ways to go. But maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe, this will be the one uh, draft of glory where we don't hit the end. We normally hit the end, the full 25 years, an 8-3 to loss to Pittsburgh, though. <laughs> I was kind of referencing, hey, maybe we win something and call it early. No, no, maybe if we keep losing to Pittsburgh in that dominant fashion, maybe we wave the white flag. Who the hell knows? I don't even know anymore. Damn it, I'm being asked to rant and ramble, and I got nothing to rant and ramble about. We've been over everything with this team. That's all it was. Vote for the two that we don't want in the top six. Set up the team and go and hope for the best or the worst, depending on what you think would be more helpful. Us making the playoffs and making, you know, making a run of it or us missing the playoffs and maybe winning the lottery. Although, let's be honest, how many? well then again, actually, how many times did we finish dead last in the league and not win the lottery? So it might be for the best to miss out on the playoffs because we might have a chance to win the lottery. Maybe, uh, you know, move up like a New Jersey, like a Philadelphia, like a Dallas did. Poor Vancouver, although it worked out for them, so it's fine. 26, 18, and 4 at the beginning of February. North Bay not exactly killing it now. 
Where are we in the standings? Let's find out. We are down into fourth in the division, currently occupying the first wild card spot in the Western Conference. We are eh, seven points back of the Edmonton Oilers, so that's not too bad. How's the team looking at this point? So, Cox, 17 goals, 19 assists. Good for 36 points in 48 games. Not really complaining. Frag uh, Howard Fragapani, 9 goals and 27 assists. Okay, 36 points. You'd like a little bit more out of him. And Dylan Redden, 38 points, our leading scorer. 38 points in 48 games. So he's on a really good pace. Ben McCauley, 8 goals, 19 assists, 27 points, not bad for the second line. Ivanov over 30, and Kim Nylander's having a great season. I mean, you could argue maybe having Nylander on that top line, but Gregory Cox is doing well. Kim Nylander has really turned into a strong option for us. Former first-round picks. Favota, 18 points, 14 for Sarno, and Steven Morose. My God, you think he's uh, benefiting from that extra power play time? I think so. I mean, 29 goals last year in his rookie year. Getting him going offensively could be huge. And again, you look at Svoboda and Sarno. They should be able to just dish it to Moreau's all day long. But, I don't know. And then Ryder McCammon, 15 points, 14 for Yang, and only 8 for Brian Boro. Boro, in fairness, has jumped up to a third line checking forward. He started the year as a fourth liner. And again... You might be able to hear the dog scratching her face. I don't know what's going on, but she's got a scratch. She's got an itchy face. You gotta scratch your face when it itches. I don't know what to tell you. Brian Boro, not quite ready for prime time on the uh, third line. He is playing with uh, line mates that, bless you, dog. He is playing with some line mates that should be able to help him generate some offense, though. Seven points there, 26. Francois doing well in terms of assists. I mean, offensive awareness, uh, puck skills, he's good to go. I am struggling to say the word assists. I don't know why. It just happens. Let's move on. Through February we go. We got this. Maybe. Possibly. This is going to be a big few weeks for us here. We're still in the playoff mix, but a bad run of form could see us uh, on the outside looking in as we get outscored 9-2 to over the last two games to begin the month. Not ideal. In terms of lineup changes, there really wasn't much that we could do, I would say. Again, the option is there with Nazarov and Vita Luoma to potentially make some call-ups and see what that does to the lineup. Of course, the morale system is not on, so the option is there. The problem with that, though, of course, is I don't really know if there's anyone in our top six that we want to drop, and we're just not going to get as much out of Nazarov or Vita Luoma on the third line. It's just not going to happen. I mean, they'll still be able to, you know, produce points, but, you know, do you want guys who are capable of 40 and 50 point seasons to only put up 30 points? Eh, it can work sometimes. Was it the best option for this series? Maybe, maybe not. Is it still an option? It absolutely is, as I swear the Sims going a little bit slower than it normally does as we lose in a shootout to the Blackhawks, and overall this has not been a successful month. We need good results here in the last three games, and we lose to Philadelphia 5 to nothing. and if you were on the side of wanting us to miss the playoffs, if we keep losing games like this, that is a strong strong possibility that could very well happen as we win the final two games of the month. So 32, 24, and 5. Where are we in terms of the postseason outlook? Let's find out. Currently outside the playoffs, it takes 71 points to be in. So 10 points back of Edmonton. We do have a game at hand. The pressure's on here, though. Fragapani. Now our leading scorer. Let's take a look at some numbers here. First and foremost, with goaltending, as Crab only has a 9-10 and a 9-13 for Fragapani. <sighs> if only Brock Sestito wanted to stay. We couldn't afford to pay him $15 million a season. Had Brock Sestito stayed, what would have happened with this series? 
because no one that we've had since has been able to do the job we need them to do. Shattenkirk, only 9 points on the season, but a plus 16 alongside Zeeler, who has 37 points. Colin Richter up to 6 points on the year. He's a plus 14 with Rene Francois, who is at least putting up points, as you would expect with him having power play time. On the third pairing, a 3-point season thus far for Pierce Holmberg with Bukaboom, who has 9 points and a plus 5. So our defense, all in all, is doing quite well. I mean, again, you know, you have someone like Saugus there who's ripping the AHL to shreds. Which is quite nice. Let's take a look at the forwards. I mean, that's good, though. We need our defense to perform. We don't have any other alternatives. Gregory Cox, 19 goals, 24 assists. Good for thir uh, 43 points on the season. So will he be able to hit 60? He's at least going to hit 50, which isn't too bad, but is more ideal for a second liner. Fragapani is our leading scorer at this point. 46 points in 61 games. And again, you want to talk about what player type he could be, what player type he should be. Red 19 goals. Now, he has had four straight 30-goal seasons. Unless he really heats up here down the stretch, that might not happen again. He and Fragapani started off strong. They've kind of fizzled out a bit. McCauley, 31 points on the year, 39 for Ivanov, and a beautiful season. For Kim Nylander, 23 goals and 15 assists, good for 38 points, but he's the leading goal scorer on the team right now. Svoboda is doing okay, 25 points, only 19 for Sarno, and Steven Moroz is killing it. He has 24 goals on the year. This guy cannot stop scoring. Which raises in the question, what the hell are we going to do with these line combos? McCammon, 23 points, 20 for Yang, 15 for Boro. With waivers in effect as well. The hell are we going to do? Because in terms of call-ups, I mean, Soroa is there, Nazarov, and Francois. The only guys I'd consider, like, moving out of the lineup. Burrow's doing fine, though, for a fourth liner. If you can hit 20 points, sure. And he's on pace to do that. I think in terms of the talent level, it's there. I mean, you could argue that Nazarov would have a higher point total, and he probably would. Maybe he would, but... You know, after this season, we know he's going to ask for nine plus million, and that's just probably not going to happen. Ah, <sighs> boy, what to do here? I do like the fact that Moroz is at least scoring goals on that third pair, but I am very disappointed in Sarno and Svoboda. So I'm tempted to bump up Moroz to a higher line, but at the very least, he has that power play time, and that's really working out for him. Let's actually check the power play and penalty kill percentages here. This is a very... Whoops, okay. I'll just go to the wrong spot. Don't mind me. This is a very crucial point in time in this series and in this season in particular where we could change things up. And maybe that sparks something. But if we keep something or things the same, you know, how will that factor in? So we are down to 17th in the league. 12.7% power play, 75% PK. What is going on? So we have by far the league's worst power play. And in terms of a penalty kill, we have the third worst. So for whatever reason, we've tried different formulas here. For whatever reason, we just have the worst special teams in the league. And I genuinely don't know why. And it's kind of frustrating and annoying. I don't really know what to do. Like you would think with the way Moroz is scoring that our power play would just be on fire here. But apparently not. So Nylander and Moroz are both doing... You know what? Shh. Let's go ahead and make that change. And I honestly don't know who else I'd want to put there. I don't want Svoboda there. That's all I know. In terms of a main goal scorer, could be Cox. It could be Redden. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a risk here. I'm gonna take a risk here. It's gonna be Moroz, Ivanov, Nylander, Ziedler, and Redden for a power play. We'll have who has the better shot between Macaulay and Svoboda. Let's go with Macaulay on that side. Francois shooting from the left. We don't have a righty for that other unit. That's okay. Actually, Cox has the better shot. Let's go with uh, 
Let's go with that setup right there. And then as far as the penalty kill is concerned, I mean, we went with top players. We've gone with bottom level players. And nothing's really worked. So let's go back to the top players with Fragapani and Ivanov at center. And on the right hand side, let's go with Redden. And you know what? I'm very tempted. Very tempted. To uh, have Nylander and Morose on the PK. You know, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. They've been our two best goal scorers. Let's get them out there on the PK and see if they can be shorthanded threats. And we'll try that, because what the hell. Deadline's coming up. Nazarov and Vita Luoma will stay for the rest of the year, at the very least. And then 99% likely at this point that they'll be released. But a big point in time now, here in this season, we're still in the playoff hunt. But we need some players to step up. And it's just a quite it, like, here's the thing. I don't know what this team is. I don't know what our goal is. And I think that's the trouble and the struggle of this episode. Is that I don't know what the hell our plan is at this point. Is our plan, or like, are we collectively hoping that we make the playoffs and by some miracle it clicks at the right time and good things happen? Are we hoping collectively that we missed the playoffs. I don't think, like, and their flat out isn't that universal goal for us with the series, aside from winning the cup. But I think in terms of how some people feel against others, some people think, okay, we got to take that step back, hopefully miss the playoffs and get some top picks. And for others, I mean, just by, you know, judging by who we capped, it's still just kind of hoping, hey, get to the playoffs and maybe good things will happen. So I'm torn because I don't know what to root for in this episode. Am I hoping that we make the playoffs? Kind of. But am I also hoping that we miss out and maybe get some lottery luck? Yeah. Because both would work. So that's just kind of the strange spot that we're in right now where it's regardless of the outcome, it it's okay. Like, you know. It's either we make it back into the playoffs and maybe good things happen, or we miss out and we get a draft pick. Like, just. I don't want to say it's indifference, because it's not. I'm still invested in this team and still want to succeed with this team. I mean, I think you guys know, especially with, like, the Montreal series that we ran last year. I don't, I don't like quitting. I like to win. <laughs> and it just hasn't happened yet. We're on 83 points, so we're only three points out of the playoffs. Calgary, though, have a game at hand. We are going to need to win the majority of our games to make the playoffs from here. We'll send the next three against Detroit, the New York Islanders, and the Vancouver Canucks. And we'll see how that goes. It's a shootout loss to the Red Wings, which is quite harmful. Against the Islanders, it's a 2-1 loss. And against the Canucks, a 3-1 win. We have six games left on the year. And I genuinely don't know if we're in a playoff spot at this point. We are not. We are four points back of Calgary. With six games to go, it's 87 points to be in the playoffs. So right now, it's looking like it's wild card or bust. We play the 40 win Minnesota Wild, who, if I'm not mistaken, are also battling for their playoff lives. They are one point clear of us. So this is going to be a tough run. We absolutely need the win here to keep the pressure on and to keep our playoff hopes alive. And it's a 3-1 to one loss. A loss here to the Kings. And we are potentially screwed. A loss here to the Kings guarantees that we need the wild card spot. So let's see what happens. It is a shootout loss. And with just four games left this season, the California Golden Seals may be missing the playoffs. It takes 90 points. We are three points back of Dallas just to be the eighth seed. Can we beat Ottawa? A 38-win team on the year. It's a shootout victory. Three games left. Toronto, New Jersey, and Vegas. We are currently two points out of the playoffs with three games to go. Let's see what happens against the 27-win Leafs. It's a 6-2 victory. Two games left. New Jersey and Vegas. 
And that Vegas game is going to be just gigantic for us. As it stands, 92 points to be in the playoffs. We have to beat the Devils to keep the dream alive of being a playoff team. It's a 2-1 to loss, and that might do it. I don't even, I don't think we have tiebreaker on Vegas, do we? Dallas is in. I'm pretty sure we are out. I am fairly certain we have just missed the playoffs. We could tie Vegas in points, but I don't think that's enough. Regulation plus overtime wins. We, I think we do. It comes down to this, I believe. I think there is the outside chance, thanks to an ungodly amount of overtime losses, that if we win this game, we sneak in as the 8th seed. <sighs> Let's see what happens. There's no point in trying to tank it. We'd probably just win anyway. Where do we stand? I talked about early in this, earlier in this episode how we're probably a playoff team regardless. Potentially not. Potentially not. First period. We're down 2-1. to one. Keller scores, as does Shishkinoff. Nylander with the goal for us. Second period. McCammond and Cox. We are 20 minutes away from potentially being playoff bound. The two teams that we have series based upon right now. McCammond scores again, making it 4-2. to two. And as it stands, we are going to the playoffs as the 8th seed, I do believe. Based off of tiebreaker. Let's hit the button. Vegas gets one back in Nova Seltzer, but we pick up the victory. I don't really care about the three stars for game 82. The California Golden Seals on the last day of the season beat the Vegas Golden Knights. Well, the last game of the season, but not the last day. We beat the Vegas Golden Knights to punch our ticket to the postseason. We will be taking on Edmonton, who had 14 more points than us in the regular season. Does it feel like we're in a holding pattern? Does it feel like, no offense, that we're the Minnesota Wild of, we can make the playoffs, but can we take that step forward? The answer's been no, except for our cup final appearance, of course. Gregory Cox, 50-point season, 59-point season, 28 goals, 30, uh, 31 assists, so not bad after jumping up from the AHL last year. Pretty good year for him. Howard Fragapani hits 60. Had 71 last year. 15 goals, 45 assists. And Dylan Redden disappoints to an extreme level. 56 points, only 22 goals. <sighs> Six points on the power play all year long. One power play goal. One. I I don't know what to think anymore. Because it's like, if you were to say who gets into the Hall of Fame for this series, I don't think anybody does at this point, do they? I don't think Fragapani makes it. I don't think Redden makes it because they just haven't gotten it done. Redden in particular. The calls have already been there in the comments. Redden is risking going down as one of the, one of the biggest busts in channel history, despite the fact that he's still a 93. Ben McCauley had an okay season. 41 points. That's a really good season for a third liner, though. But kind of a mass season for a second liner. Back-to-back 55-point seasons. Gets the chance on the second line. And disappoints. So, Cox did okay. Fragapani was okay. Redden disappointed. And Ben McCauley disappointed, in my opinion. Ivanov hits 52 points. So, good season from him. That's pretty much what he's capable of. Kim Nylander with a 47-point season but 28 goals, and I think that's the difference maker. Um, granted, only seven points separate them, but I'm much more happy uh, with Nylander than I am with McCauley. Svoboda, 32-point season, not bad for a third liner, but you almost expect more from someone with that playmaking ability. Sarno, very much disappointed. Andrew Sarno was not good this season. 23 points. He should have been capable of so much more. So much more. On the flip side, though, we have Steven Moreau's 43 points, 32 goals this season. So, in terms of disappointments, I mean, Sarno, McCauley, and Redden are the ones that really stick out right now. Svoboda was just okay. 
Then you have McCammond, who had a great season. Great season for a fourth liner. Again, 20 points is the goal. 27 points, 15 goals. I will take that. Henry Yang hits the mark. 23-point season. And Brian Boro, at the very least, hit the mark. So I'm not really complaining. Again, 20 points for the fourth line. 30 points there. 40 to 50. And then, you know, you'd hope for 60-plus. It really raises questions of what these line combos should be and whether or not Nazarov, who, you know, didn't exactly set the world on fire down in the AHL, whether or not Nazarov should get the chance, Vita Luoma, or potentially guys who might still have a future on this team like Jean-Francois and Stefan Soreau, whether or not anybody should get the opportunity. If I were to base these line combos off of, you know, who performed and who didn't, I think we'd probably go with something like that. And even then I'd be tempted to bump down that third line to the fourth line. But if we want to base things off of who performed and who didn't, I mean, hell, you could even go with Moroz on the top line instead of Redden. That third line, the three biggest disappointments offensively for us this year. Not even close. It's not even close. Defensively, Henry Shattenkirk, 13-point season, a plus 17. That's solid. We could look at his fight consistency, or consistency, fight tendency. uh, 76 fighting skills, so he shouldn't be fighting constantly. But for a seventh-round pick to turn into what he's turned into is phenomenal. Uh, You know, potential top two defenseman for us. Andrew Zeeler had a really good season. 45 points, so I believe that's, I was going to say, I don't believe that's a career high. That tied his career high from last year. Uh, let's take a look here. Colin Richter, 8 points and a plus 19, so a season of redemption for him after an absolutely brutal season last year. Then we have Rene Francois, a solid option on the power play, 29 points this season. Happy with him. Holmberg, 3 points and a minus 7. Bukaboom, 14 points and a plus 2, so... I don't hate how the defense uh, how the defense performed this year, and then we have Stu Crab, who wasn't great, and Esteban Fragapani, just average goaltending, nothing phenomenal, just average goaltending for us. And with that, again, we find ourselves in the same spot in the playoffs. Can't exactly say we're favorites, no expectations, but maybe that's what we needed. Maybe that's what we needed. Let me know what you think we should do line combo-wise. And especially, too, the power play and the penalty kill with how much we underperformed. And potentially, too, I'm not against changing up player types. Again, I've tried to create a good balance of, like, okay, playmaker, sniper, two-way, playmaker, sniper, power forward. Maybe we just need to roll with whatever play type has, you know, the best setup. I mean... But with the Dylan Redden, we've tried a sniper. We've tried a power forward, which is what he was originally drafted as. It's like, do we go playmaker? Do we go two-way? Like, fuck, do we set him up as a grinder and just put him on the fourth line? A lot of different questions in terms of line combos, the personnel, the player type options. And it all leads to the next episode where, again, we will be taking on the Edmonton Oilers in the first round of the playoffs with, again, perhaps... Very little, if any, expectations. But we do end up beating Vegas on the final day of the season. Edmonton won the President's Trophy this season. I do want to take a look here. Goals for per game. We were not extremely high up there. We finish at a 2.65. Goals against at a 2.59, which would have been mid-table, slightly towards the top. Our power play was the worst in the league. Our penalty kill at a 78.1 was one of the worst in the league as well. About identical records, 4-3-3 heading into the postseason. That will do it for one of the more strange episodes I think we've had of this series thus far. Where I don't want, again, I don't want to say it's, it's disinterest. But... I don't know if we, like, uh, there's no clarity, right? There's no clarity on the situation. I don't know what to expect 
moving forward. I don't know what to make of this episode. As Gregory Cox had not been for a great season from Jack Petrovic, would have won the Calder at 24 years old, Panarin style. I don't know what to make of this episode. I don't know what to make of our chances heading into the postseason. I don't know what to make of this team, what we should do. But that'll do it for this one. I'm beyond intrigued at seeing your reaction, your feedback, suggestions uh, that come out of this episode. I just, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. This series is just in such a weird spot right now. But we'll see what happens in the next one. Regardless, I thank you guys for supporting this series as weird as this episode was. Again, I don't, I hopefully don't want it to sound as if I was like disinterested while, you know, recording this episode. Certainly not, but I don't, I don't know how to explain, you know, my feelings as far as how this series is going. Like I said, I'm not Sitting here thinking like, oh my god, the series, it's, uh, like, I don't feel like the series has jumped the shark, I don't feel like it's time to end it, but mixed feelings in that I just want to (laughs) win. I just want to win. But who knows, when your expectations are at the lowest, maybe that's when good things will happen. Maybe there'll be an upset in the next round, or maybe it'll be one and done in a draft episode. Time will tell. Until next time, have a good one. I'll see you then.